We're here for small equipment, and I really, I'd like to introduce Fred Forsberg here, who's uh, really went out of his way to, to, uh, to host this for us, making it happen, clean out his barn. Yeah. To, uh, <laughs> this, uh, yeah. Thanks, Robert. Uh, yeah, thank you for making me clean out the barn. It's great. Uh, Maybe we'll have a square dance in here later yeah. on. Uh, I'm just going to be very brief. What was this all about? I, have, I didn't grow up a farmer. Don't know anybody that does much cultivation, or at least nobody around here knows anything about cultivation. I read Steel in the Field, went through all of the references in the back, called half of them last year, most of them are out of business. The ones that are out of business don't make cultivating equipment. Anyway, bought equipment, most of it which we don't know how to use fully. I went to a weed school at, pa at PASA a couple of years ago. And the bottom line is they come out with a whole bunch of cultivating equipment in this uh, indoor arena with soil, and they drove it around. Well, to me, that was like driving a bulldozer, a school bus, and a Volkswagen, call that driving. Well, driving is not about the equipment, it's about what are the rules of the road. I don't know what the rules of the road are, and that's how I talked to Robert, and he found a shot. So that's why we're here. We were very fortunate to get Chuck Moore to come down uh, to, to, uh, to do this presentation, to try to find somebody that, that really uh, knew this subject well and could present it. And, every, and, and, and Chuck's uh, career and his, uh, uh, his reputation, uh, everyone pointed, said, we want Chuck. So uh, I'd like to introduce Chuck Moore, Cornell University, Crop Soil Science Department. Hi. Well, welcome everybody. I'm glad to be here. Um, to see so many people coming out on a cold day to sit in a cold barn. <laughs> um, uh, like Robert said, I'm in the Crop and Soil Science Department. Uh, my mandate basically was to deal with field crops, and I've been working on cultivating field crops, cultivation of field crops, and other methods of uh, non-chemical weed management. Uh, since 1990, um, uh, actually mid 80s, uh, if you count all the other types of uh, non chemical management. But um, I started and, and uh, ran the uh, Cornell Organic Cropping Systems project for uh, the first six years. Uh, I passed that on a few, a few years ago to uh, Lori Drinkwater, but um, and uh, that involves a very large vegetable experiment with a lot of different vegetable crops, and we cultivate them all because it's organic. That's a um, major portion of weed management. Um, so I've learned a lot about, uh, I knew a fair bit about cultivation in general because I've been studying it, studying cultivators and how they work uh, since about 19, well, since 1990. Um, but then I started getting more into vegetable machines um, uh, during the 2000s and have done a fair bit of work, but I don't really consider myself a vegetable cultivation expert, okay? So, you know, I know something about it, but um, I can't guarantee you won't have questions that I may not be able to answer. Um, and I'll try to be straight up with you if that happens. Um, I haven't used every imaginable tool that's out there. Uh, and for vegetable production, there are a lot more different kinds of machines, different kinds of tools than there are for field crop production. Um, I want to start by pointing out that uh, you know cultivation is only one component of your overall weed management. And when I talk to very experienced organic farmers, um, about their, weed man about their weed management program, they almost always start with crop rotation. And, you know, this is how my crop rotation supports my weed management. And they'll tell me exactly how, how it works for them. And so, uh, there are a lot of things that you want to have in place, and crop rotation is probably the most critical. Um, and some colleagues of mine and I actually have a, a book on crop rotation. It's called Crop Rotation on Organic Farms, a Planning Manual. And uh, you can find it on, on the web. Uh, 
So other things that need to be in place, your, your farm design is going to affect your, your, your weed management, uh, you know, whether you're on beds or, or uh, just an open field situation uh, with rows, uh, and, uh, you know, whether you use plastic or don't use plastic, all those kind of things matter. Uh, soil health is real critical. I'll actually say something more about how it interacts with, with, um, with your cultivators. Um, nutrient management, I've been working on nutrient management uh, for uh, weed management and how nutrient management interacts with weed management for the last 10 years. And uh, I can tell you right now that half the people in this room at least are fertilizing their weeds more than they need to be. Um, it's amazing. All our weeds in the Northeast are, almost all of them, are very highly responsive to uh, phosphorus and if you put a, or, and, and someone for potassium, dandelion for example, is a really a potassium, it really loves potassium. So if you're applying a lot of compost and you're building up those in the soil year after year, um, you know, you get your nitrogen from the compost, the nitrogen is enough cover crops, it builds up, uh, you're fertilizing your weeds. Um, uh, mulches, obviously, whether uh, plastic mulch or straw mulch, uh, kind of uh, important weed management component, and then seed bank management. And, you know, we know that a lot of weeds, common lands, of course, personally, for example, last for decades in the soil. Some of them last for decades in the soil, but most of them are coming in each year. And most of the weeds you see in a given year were produced by, um, by weeds that went to seed last year. And if you can control your seeding, both by cleaning up the field promptly after you harvest, roguing out the big weeds and those sorts of things, that's going to affect your ability to control the weeds in your cultivation. So I just wanted to start by pointing out that all these other factors are very important. And, and we can't be thinking about weed management as cultivation and only cultivation. Uh, so I'm going to start. Uh, Fred and, and uh, Robert both said that, that I should really emphasize principles. So I'm going to start with some principles and, uh, and go, go on from there. Um, so uh, in-row weeding is essential for good crop production, obviously. Got to get the weeds out of the row. You can't just get the weeds between the rows. Um, and sure, you're probably going to hoe or hand weed the crop at least once, um, unless maybe you're mulching it real heavily or something. Um, but if you can get a lot of the weeds out with a machine, <coughs> out of that row with a machine, it's going to make your hoeing and hand weeding a whole lot easier. And so I'm going, to, I'm going to be emphasizing in-row weed management. In-row and very close to the row weed management with cultivators here in this, in this talk. Um, you know, you might say, well, i got to go through a hoe anyway. Um, so it doesn't matter how many weeds are there. But you think about it, you know, you're, you're, you're moving that hoe around and there are all sorts of dead weeds and half-dead weeds and, you know, cut up stuff laying on the ground. It, there could easily be a couple there that you're not seeing in amongst all the ones that are half dead, and and you know. But if there's just three weeds per foot, you can make sure that you get them all when you hand weed your foot. So um, you know, you really want to try to be getting some of your weeding done in the row with machines. Oh, okay, so real simple concept. Most of you know this: cultivator rows have to equal the planter row. Um, the place where I see this coming in with vegetable growers is if you plant single rows, um, you know, and, and you're not laying a furrow first. If you lay a furrow with a two-row furrow, and then you can come back and and, and you plant into the two rows, into the two furrows, and you can come back with a two-row machine. But if you're just uh, planting along with a string or something, um, a string or a stick or something, you, you know, you're going to get these places where they, where they pinch out. Well, then when you take a two-row machine through here, what's going to happen? You've either got to set the, you've got to either have your cultivation area very narrow so you miss a lot of weeds here and here and here and here, or else you're going to have it wide and you're going to tear out part of those rows. 
So, um, you know, just it's, it's a simple thing, but something particularly new for our pain is. Cultivator tanks have to be level. And I don't care what kind of cultivator, whether it's a tying leader or a row crop cultivator or something on the, you know, on the back of the machine or a uh, cultivator on, the, on, a, on a belly mount. If you've got more than one gang, more than one set of tools in the direction of, of the cultivation, um, then that has to be level. Otherwise, some of your tools are going to be too deep or else too shallow. And if they're too deep, you know, you may be damaging crop roots or stirring up weed seeds to the soil surface that you don't need to be stirring up. Or um, if they're too shallow, you're not going to be killing the leaves effectively. Um, so make sure that your gang, whatever it is, is level. That often requires getting off the tractor and getting down and look, and then getting on and adjusting, you know, getting them and adjusting your top. Um, Cultivator has to be appropriate to the size of the weeds and the size of the crop. Um, you know, I've had situations where, okay, we had to go out and cultivate the sweet corn, and we've been busy doing other things and got to it, and the sweet corn was a little too big, and you know, we were the, the tool bar on the cultivator was too low, and we were breaking corn. So, so you know, obviously, you don't want to do that. You <laughs> oh, you, uh, there's something people refer to as a dust mulch, um, and, and it's nice to create a loose surface layer on the soil with your cultivator. Um, if, you, if you've had a rain and the soil is kind of real settled from that, now it's drying out, you can get in there with the machine, you want to break that up, loosen it up, fluff it up so that, so that it dries out. And any little leaf seedlings that are in there are going to dry up and die. And, and because most weeds, as I'll show here in a minute, are, have small seeds, uh, they can't germinate. If they germinate close, deep in the soil, they won't make it out of the ground. So the only ones that are going to actually emerge are the ones that are in the surface. Well, if the surface layer of the soil is dry, then they won't germinate and you won't have weeds there. Or you'll have very few if you can come up. Um, so, uh, it's not really dust, you don't want a really powdery surface, but uh, a nice crumbly surface that dries out quickly will prevent weed establishment. So, so Chuck, mm -hmm. I suspect that you're, you're recommending you cultivate frequently. So yeah, that up. yeah, years later. Um, I mean, even if you don't see it. Even if you don't see the weed, you might very well want to be cultivated. Um, the other thing is, if you paw around in the soil and you see weeds in the white thread stage, you know, these little, they germinated, and you see these little wormy things down there in the soil, that's a great time to kill weeds. You know, if you kill them at that stage, then they don't come up and be big. And uh, they're really easy to kill when they're so tiny. 